Halfway through the competition at the Beijing Winter Olympics, 18-year-old Eileen Gu Gu Eileen, has won silver in the women's free ski slope style final. Earlier, she grabbed global headlines when she won her first gold medal in the women's big air freestyle skiing event. In addition to her Olympic debut, her career choice and life experience have also attracted a lot of attention and, quite frankly, some controversy too. Should we let sport be sport? And should we give her the freedom to let live her own life and live her own dreams? For more on this and the ongoing Beijing Winter Olympics, I'm very happy to be joined by Yan Chang, a veteran sports commentator and founder of Score Sports, and also by Remigio Brunelli, vice chair of Sport Forum at the European Chamber. Gentlemen, welcome to the show, uh, Mr. Yan Chang. Let me start with you. Uh, by the way, I'm a big fan of your columns. Uh, grew up uh, watching and reading your columns. Uh, let's talk about Eileen Gu, a phenomenal figure. She's just become one of the only two female athletes who have made it to the podium of both big air and slope style. Uh, quite an achievement. Uh, do you think she has lived up to all the expectations before the Games? Oh, yes, uh, absolutely. I think she's a f wonderful or even freakish uh, genius uh, in uh, the Winter Olympics. And, uh, she performed with a smile on her face, and uh, she's uh, uh, bi-national uh, or bi-cultural, you know, uh, in the uh, American and Chinese style. She's the perfect model for these Olympics. And then, Yan Chang, you've covered sports for, for so many decades. What do you think is behind her success? Because she's quite unique. I mean, she's uh, different from, uh, you know, any other athlete. I would consider Eileen as a... Um, cultural figure for, uh, for the current society or for, for this time, for this era. You know, uh, maybe put her under level as a kind of a uh, national hero worship is a step too far, but uh, she represents the Z generation. I mean, you know, the generation born after 2000s. You know, they are growing up in the social media and the mobile internet era and uh, they are more open to the world and open to all kinds of cultural influences and uh, they are brave uh, to stick to their own principles, their own lifestyle choices. So it's very aspiring and uh, heartwarming to see her perform. Yeah, uh, it's also heartwarming to see her love for Chinese food, uh, you know, the jiu cai he, uh, that made, uh, you know, Weibo or so yesterday, the trending on the social media. Uh, and that's nothing commercial. <laughs> it, you know, it's so good and so yum. Uh, I love it. Uh, many Chinese love it. Um, Ramijo, let me go to you. As a European watching the ongoing Beijing Winter Olympics, uh, what is the biggest story for you so far? <laughs> A lot of story, I guess, uh, when it's uh, definitely the, um, sorry, I got the return of my voice. Uh, uh, it's a little bit complicated, so I tried to. Uh, as the most important for me has been really uh, incredible, uh, the how the China uh, Olympic Committee has been able to develop in uh, such an amazing Olympics uh, in, uh, in a COVID-19, uh, and uh, that has been a uh, very, Astonished. I spoke with some people inside of the bubble, and they told me that almost everything is perfect according to the, the consideration. Uh, for me, the um, the part that is uh, quite uh, impressive is that you can have a winner from 16 to 41 years old. So the Olympics is a very crossroad over cultural uh, activities. And personally, what I'm uh, really appreciated uh, has been uh, to move in the big air competition in the heart of the uh, one of the important area of Beijing, the Shigan. So bringing the Winter sports uh, down to the to the city, and uh, even because it's uh, uh, it's not just a sport, but it's also a sustainability process and pro the, the, um, activities uh, that it's uh, to recon recondition in a large uh, surface of uh, old factory, and now it's becoming a very important area for play sports and uh, activities. Right, uh, Yan Chang. Let me turn back to you. You know, talking about Eileen Gu, Gu Eileen, some right wing U.S. commentators. Uh, called Eileen's decision to represent China, quote-unquote, ungrateful. And some other, you know, right-wing extremist commentators even used harsher words on this 18-year-old, saying that uh, somehow uh, she's letting America down, betraying America. Uh, your thoughts on this? Oh, I think that's just the opposite of that. It's uh, 
is her attitude of showing gratefulness towards both countries, you know, the country where uh, her mother uh, was from and was raised up, and especially the city. Uh, in my acknowledgement that her mother was a typical Beijing girl, or we call Beijing big girl. And uh, uh, she grew up in America from San Francisco and she learned her uh, skills uh, on skiing. And uh, at the same time, Eileen is also a very good runner, maybe close to a professional level. That's uh, her, uh, her performance on these Olympics and on all these skiing um, matches, showing that her gratitude to towards China and to America. And we cannot just simply consider her to be a typical American girl or a, 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 a Chinese girl. She's bilingual as well as bi-national. Uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes I was wondering, uh, when, when can people let sport be sport, right? Uh, Hailing Gu herself in 2019 said, uh, talking about her decision to represent China instead of America, she said the opportunity to help inspire millions of young people where my mom was from um, is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to really help promote the sport she loves. Uh, how do you see her gold medal and now the silver medal, and you know she's going to compete in her third event? How do you see all that inspire the next generation of Chinese to take up winter sports? I think she's already a great inspiration, uh, and we have already witnessed the huge uh, traffic on social media. Uh, with the hashtag Eileen Gu and Eileen Gu uh, goat medal, Eileen Gu eating some typical Chinese food. Uh, you know, she's closely linked with this sport activity. And China, uh, traditionally, were not a huge nation on winter sports, especially not on snowy skiing uh, sports disciplines. And uh, whatever you're talking about here, especially um, even when she's appearing in all, uh, all kinds of adverts, on commercials, you would always link her with these winter sports, and that could be the best way to uh, promote, to uh, market these sports in China. Right, right, right. Um, Remigio, let me turn back to you. Uh, as a European, how do you look at all this? I mean, how do you look at China's decision to naturalize foreign-born uh, people, uh, residents, who may or may not have Chinese heritage to represent chi Team China uh, in the Olympics? No, I mean, the naturalization in sports has always been uh, uh, in. So it's not the, today, of course, people, they criticize, uh, but they have probably a short memory or a, a little vision. Uh, and uh, perhaps I would like to say, even uh, they are a little bit envy, because uh, especially the success of Ellinger today, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. But I would like to say that it's, uh, we need to go over this kind of, uh, kind of concept because even in other sports as I said uh, and not necessarily to the uh, naturalization is going to bring in a, a successful story so it's a full package uh, of uh, uh, elements that has to be combined together in order to be successful it's not just to change in the flag uh, or the nationality that you can uh, you became uh, a champion or not therefore I think in that this kind of uh, uh, protests, uh, it's not so bad, uh, has to be handled incorrectly from the athletes uh, and uh, in particular for Ellen, as, uh, as I, my colleague before said, uh, it's a, she's a promoter and she's an influencer, so I see just positive uh, um, results uh, for uh, this kind of uh, decision from her. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, Yan Chang, uh, talking about naturalization, we've heard from uh, Rami Jill. Oh, no. How do you feel about the na naturalization for Team China? We've seen foreign-born uh, uh, foreign -born nationals on China's ice hockey team, skating team, skiing team, of course. Uh, some 16 out of the 25 uh, China's uh, you know, ice hockey players, male players, were born overseas. Uh, how do you feel about all this? Wang Guan, I know uh, where this topic is leading to. Can we not talk about football afterwards? You know, in winter sports, in winter Olympics <laughs> alone, I would say this kind of naturalization is a temporary method because China, as a host nation, we are pretty weak in the competitiveness of the winter Olympics. We had won just one gold medal for the past Olympics held in Korea. Therefore, uh, if these um, Olympians, they have Chinese heritage, it's a shortcut to recruit talents on a global sense. And it also shows a, 
a broad view of how we form our Team China. But uh, in other sports disciplines, as the topic that you are going to mention, it's another story. It's a disaster. You know, I think we have about two minutes left. Uh, Yan Chang, you know, you've been covering football for, for the longest time. I'm we need to two hours, two days. Uh, people have been lashing out on Chinese men's football team recently. Uh, your take on where should the change start to you know, improve it, men's football? And then later, Rami Jiu. Uh, Yan Chang, go first. Oh, we, need, we need just to give more kids the chance to taste and play the sport. You know, uh, we're talking about you know getting more people on, on skiing on uh, winter sports, and we did it. But in football, it's another story. Uh, it's just, uh, just too long a story, and we cannot uh, go details in two minutes time. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, I'll come back next time. Sorry for the time constraint, uh, but do come back and chat. <laughs> uh, Rami Jiu, what about you? How do you think? What do you think? I'm agreed from what I heard before. I mean, it's a long story, but I would like to say that just for me, I came in China in 2005, and I'm just making a comparison with Yao Ming and the basketball. I think that Elan Gu could be for the winter sport. So natural, actually, is a star, is an influencer. She has a smile, and she's a, as you say, is a Generation Z communicator. So I think that is a great, uh, great. Um, experience and opportunity for developing all the system because uh, as I said it's not just a blinker that is going to bring in the cultural education and uh, and champion so it's, uh, it's a good, it's a great starting point and the Olympics represented a starting point uh, for the future of the winter sports in China. Remigio Brunelli and Yan Chang thank you both so very much gentlemen thank you for coming on our show.